Hey guys, so these are the, um, this is the cosmic ray experiment again. I'm showing you what's uh, on the scope now. This bottom one is what's actually coming off of the, um, yeah, I don't know if the backlight would help or not. Looks cool, but probably not. Um, the bottom one is what's directly coming off the cosmic rays, and the top one is what's coming off of the op amp. So you can see I have it inverted. Here, I don't know if that's going to give you a better picture, but it's inverted. And these little spikes are particles that are coming in. So you can see down here at the bottom and up here at the top. And so um, you can see it's working perfectly. Uh, the op amps are able to capture those uh, very short glitches, um, which are the Okay, so that's that's what it looks like in the light. This is the op amp, so I'm going to explain all of this, but I just wanted you to see what it was like um, with the cosmic rays working. By the way, that's at um, 0.5 volts per division with a times 10 probe, so it's about 5 volts per division. So those, those spikes are, you know, good size 5 volt spikes. So I'm going to turn everything off here, unplug it, and explain exactly how I got this to work with a uh, usable signal here. So I am going handheld and sorry that light is out so video quality is not going to be the best. But um, I have my same supply here just as I said last time switched around so that um, it's minus 1 kV relative to mains earth. Again I have mains earth connected to the soldering iron. I have this time I've surrounded most of it in a tinfoil shield so hopefully that helps with the shielding a little bit. Um, same as always, this is where channel 1 was. That was the one on the bottom. Uh, that's the direct signal from the uh, scintillator inside. You can see a picture right here. And just low, overlay it over. Um, and then, uh, so that was what was on the bottom of the scope. And then we get to the op amps. These, this was what was doing the magic. Okay, so this was the op amp that was doing all of the magic here, this is where I was taking channel 2 from, was the output of the op amp. I was feeding it with two supplies. So this supply was set to positive, and then I needed a negative supply as well, about plus and minus 12 volts, I want to say. So this supply was feeding the positive, and the negative of this supply, which is connected to mains earth, is connected to the positive of this supply. And the negative of this supply is connected to um, the sort of positive negative voltage, so the positive so the negative rail, basically, of the op amp. Not ground, the negative rail. So about 10 volts below ground. And this is the op amp here, okay? You can see we have um, signal comes in in this yellow wire on the right. And we have three sections here um, for each of the three precision resistors that I'm using. However, the value to me isn't, isn't super important. It's just that it generates spikes that are big enough to be seen. And uh, then it goes to the scope. So that's, that's really everything to the op amp, but let me explain it in um, with schematics. So this is the first op amp. It's, um, it's just standard non-inverting amplifier. Now the thing with this is those spikes, as you saw, were going down originally and I have them going up, and that's what I do with this inverting amplifier, and then I have another non-inverting. This part of the schematic has yet to be done. Uh, but what you have to consider is that with a non-inverting amplifier like this, your impedance is going to be fairly low because you have uh, it's going to be this resistor coming in, whereas with this, uh, theoretically, it should have infinite. However, it's, um, it's not infinite, but it's so high that it should really have a negligible effect. Um, and the thing is, since this is many megaohms of resistance, you know, um, a fairly large resistance will still affect it, much less a really small resistor like a 1K, you know, whereas many, you know, 10 megs won't affect a 1K much, 10, 10 megs will affect 3 megs a lot. So I needed an inverting amplifier because you want the spikes, I wanted the spikes to be going up, you can have them go down, but I wanted them to be going up, and I know that you needed a relatively high gain. However, with a single op amp with 100 gain, it really loses its bandwidth really quick, and since you saw those spikes are really narrow, I want to say, um, 100 microseconds on average. Um, I don't want to. I, I didn't want the loss of bandwidth. You know, it could be less than 100 microseconds or more. So I didn't want to lose bandwidth. So I had um, three times 10 op amps. Now I don't think they're all doing times 10. Um, however, for, for some weird reason, I don't know why, but they, they seem to be working just fine. Um, 
and I and they're probably doing like since all three of them times ten 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 I think is what I had it should be about a thousand times gain however the gain isn't important the gain you can set yourself I just picked the gain arbitrarily it's the impedance matching of the op amps compared to this cosmic ray scintillator thing that you need to be careful of um, so one you want to select multiple op amps string together with low gain instead of one with high gain because then you don't drop your bandwidth as much you know your bandwidth is much higher at 10 times than it is 100 times and if you want and so say you know you said all right I'll do 10 with three uh, sorry three with 10 times amplification right so you know at least I knew I wanted my signal to be reversed so I said well okay we can't have a, the uh, inverting op amp be first because um, its impedance is too low and it'll just drop the, the signal down to nothing because the signal is coming across a few hundred K resistor so it'll drop. So I, I knew that if I had an um, inverting op amp at the beginning it would drop my signal to zero. However a non-inverting op amp has um, theoretically infinite resistance on the positive um, terminal because it doesn't need this resistor the signal just goes straight into the non-inverting input. So um, I decided to go with a positive uh, non-inverting amplifier first with uh, 10 times about amplification you know 10 times approximately I am using precision resistors here so but not the 1k because uh, I didn't I didn't consider amplification super important because I'm not I, I don't really care about the exact energy of the particles I just care that the energy of the particles is significant because I'm more concerned about the quantity of particles than the energy of particles but however um, and also lots of energy will be lost in the chain of particles coming down that I'm not detecting so while I may be able to detect a portion of the energy I'm not going to be able to detect all of it so I, I don't really you know find energy as important as amount of, of cosmic rays which is the amount of muons hitting the scintillator anyway so after this I'm not inverting amplifier which is going to also buffer the signal for this inverting amplifier that way the uh, load that the buffer places isn't going to load down the cosmic rays it's instead going to load down the previous op amp which can easily handle it because it's an op amp and can provide up to 40 milliamps so then I had an inverting op amp which looks like this um, you basically just switch the resistor you can look up non-inverting amplifier uh, schematics on the internet if you're curious uh, it basically multiplies the signal by 10 and flip-flops it upside down and then I had another um, non-inverting amplifier with about 10 times amplification so you can see this that this op uh, amp right here with the orange wire that is the first one that's the first non-inverting amplifier the second one here um, right right there that is the non-inverting uh, the inverting amplifier and then this one is the third non-inverting amplifier and the white wire is where I'm getting my signal out. So that's what I did for the cosmic rays. Now I have a workable signal that I can use to then, um, what I need to do now is set it to a comparator to compare the level and then set a set level. And it's a good thing I have one more op amp on this chip that I can use as a comparator. You can watch my op amps as comparator videos. And then I can send the signal through an opto isolator to get it isolated from mains ground so I can use a separate power supply for my microcontroller. And then um, from the opto isolator, get the signal out and send it to a microcontroller and an LED. So that's, um, that's all there is. That's what I've done. Um, besides, in last video, you saw how I fixed the power supply. Uh, it blew up again, so I fixed the diodes again, but no big deal. Um, Cosmic Ray, the box itself has always been the same. Uh, again, I'm using two power supplies as just a dual rail power supply to power this thing, and then I have the op amp chain. Um, uh, so that's really what's new is that I've um, I've got the signal now amplified to a workable level. Um, it's really important to uh, make sure that if you want to do this yourself, or even whenever considering op amp design, is that you you remember that uh, when you have a high gain, the bandwidth gets uh, cut down very fast. Um, as you saw, those small spikes were making it all the way through. Um, and that remember that a non-inverting amplifier will have a significant um, effect on a high resistive or even a low resistive circuit because whatever your resistor is here is directly the impedance of the op amp, whereas this one, it's, it's close to infinity, many gig ohms. So uh, that's everything that's... Um, 
been done so far, it's, it's getting pretty successful. So what I have to do now is I'm probably going to put a low fat, low pass filter um, before this point um, to filter out the 60 hertz. I may not, I may determine that I don't need it, and then I'm going to send it directly to a comparator. So um, if I don't need the low pass filter, it'll go directly to the comparator. Uh, simp a simple RC filter and then send it directly to the comparator um, is what's next. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about um, designing op amps for a very specific and difficult tasks. Um, and I hope you enjoyed watching more muons coming from protons hitting the upper atmosphere from my scintillator cosmic ray detector. So thanks for watching.